All right, so moving on to this next one. Uh, last one, obviously, talking about how Dorsey's kind of getting the team in the right situations, and this is another situation like that. You see them starting in I formation. Uh, what is this, 22 personnel here? And then you see them reload the formation, get Gilliam and Morris mm. out wide to the same side as uh, Kumaro, and you get a three-by-one set here and shotgun. And as everyone's shifting, you can kind of see what, the defense is planning to do. It helps you kind of ID what's going on in that regard. See them check into cover one and you can see post snap too, with all of these, these, uh, these crossing routes, it makes it really, really easy to diagnose if it's man or zone mm -hmm. right off the bat. And you can see it from the end zone angle too. You can see Josh Allen just staring right down the barrel, down the hash marks on the right side. And you can see he's obviously, you know, keying in on what's going on with that safety. But if you have people just chasing, your guys, then I mean, more likely than not, it's going to be man. And with the the um, the concept and all the crossing routes, you can see the kind of separation that Knox has on McCreary here. Obviously, McCreary starting off with outside leverage, so mm -hmm. he's kind of working from behind on this one. Mm -hmm. But you got Knox on the drag route here with a lot of separation there, as I already mentioned, and just really great job by both Josh and Dorsey, kind of working symbiotically to make sure you know what's going on pre-snap and then being able to execute post-snap. For for me, I want to highlight what Reggie Gilliam and Quentin Morris do on this play because okay. this goes from a, you know, power football type of look. You're in 22 personnel. So whether, you know, offense could be expecting play action or maybe you're going power run or you're going gap or you're going counter, or you're going zone, whatever the hell. You're in 22 personnel and you're in, you know, an I formation with two tight ends hipped off to the right side. And then they motion and reload into a three by one set with Reggie Gilliam and Quentin Morris in the slot. Quentin Morris as the number two receiver, Reggie Gilliam as the third. I know this play goes to Dawson Knox, but just watch Reggie Gilliam. We'll start with him. Watch Reggie Gilliam just get up field, not like a fullback. Like, like an athlete, like a person who's comfortable running routes. He even gets rerouted and keeps going smooth, fluid, stays, stays on point, actually gets upfield a little bit and has an opportunity to make this catch. And then you've got Quentin Morris, who, former wide receiver, comfortable in space, comfortable running routes. We know that from the preseason. And you see him in the slot there, and he gives you – another potential option as somebody who's comfortable this time he's just more straight decoy and he's dragging his man across the field which clears it out for Knox on the back end this is for me I take this into something we talked about a lot this offseason multiplicity and versatility mm -hmm. it's why we like Quentin Morris it's why we like Reggie Gilliam what's very nice is being able to get to multiple looks right without having to change personnel the Bills start out in a traditional running formation, like a power run formation. Again, you could run zone out of it. You could run gap. You can run power. You can run counter. You can run a multitude of things. And then they switch into more of a spread concept, and you're in a three-by-one formation. And two of your quote-unquote power guys, your heavier personnel guys, your second tight end, and your fullback are lined up as your number two and three receiver, and they actually can live and breathe and function in that space. And that's the beauty of the multiplicity because as yes. I just highlighted, they only have four DBs on the field. Yes. Yes. It just forces your hand. And now if, if the bills, you know, want to run the ball, they can run it out of that power look. But again, you highlighted the four DBs that are on the field. If there's four DBs on the field and there's four down linemen, that means at the very least you got three linebackers there on the field. Well, if you have four down linemen and four DBs, you definitely have three linebackers. But now you've got linebackers on the field. Why are they on the field? Because they see your personnel grouping. Uh-oh, yep. they're going heavy. They're going 22, so they have a fullback and they have an extra tight end. We probably think the run is coming. Let's load up and go base personnel. Let's go three linebackers. Let's go with more of a heavy look so we can execute these run fits. Then you reload – you get into a three by one set, and now Quentin Morris and Reggie Gilliam, they they have a mismatch advantage because who's going to be on them? At least one of them is going to see a linebacker, and in this instance, Reggie Gilliam in the slot there, he's got Zach Cunningham on him, and Zach Cunningham cannot cover worth a lick. Zach Cunningham is good coming forward; he's mm -hmm. gotten better 
in that in that aspect of his game, but this goes all the way back to his time in Houston. He's never been strong in coverage. That is not his strong suit. Right. He almost just tries to reroute Reggie Gilliam here as a last ditch effort, and you know, Bayard at, at the deep safety, he goes with the throw. But if Allen maybe led him with his eyes, he could have come back and hit Reggie same Gilliam. Thing. I'll, I'll pause it before Allen makes the move. So this is about the move when Allen's about to start his throwing motion right Gilliam, here. Gilliam's gone because Cunningham is beat. Yep. McCreary's coming along with Knox and Byard's too far. a little bit of separation right there. This guy's trailing with Knox over here. And then obviously this is Byard back here. But again, so it's another option. Like this is open, but that's the point that you're saying. Like there are options on this play and that's the beauty of multiplicity within your personnel being able to live in 22 but make it seem like 11 somehow it's it's very beautiful that's actually like that's that's an awesome point like you're in 22 personnel but you're running like an 11 personnel type of formation and because you force the defense's hand to match your 22 personnel you now have the advantage because your second tight end and your fullback can both function in the pass game. And guess what? That third linebacker you brought in, and even if you're Tennessee, your second linebacker and Zach Cunningham, your second linebacker can't cover. Your third linebacker probably isn't as good of a cover guy as your nickel guy was going to be, or even a fifth TB in general. Now you've got that mismatch. You've got a heavier personnel guy on your offense who can run receiver options who can function in space like that up against Mm -hmm. bigger, heavier thumping run defense focused type of defenders. It screams mismatch. Oh, it screams mismatch. Mm -hmm. You're able to get to more of the menu without having to turn the page. That's exactly what it is, right? Everybody has the same menu, Mm -hmm. but usually you have to turn the pages to see what's on the rest of the menu. Having personnel versatility like that Mm -hmm. puts more of the menu on less pages, one page. (laughs) Boom. And that's, Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's really exciting stuff. The way that they're getting the most out of that personnel versatility.